G'day, the Radio FM 88 Australia, broadcasting from Brisbane, Queensland. It's currently 12 o'clock here on a Friday, the 14th of August, and traditionally we go our show on a Thursday night. Today we've uh, made arrangements because of our guest uh, is based in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and we're working in with their time zone, which is currently 8 o'clock their Thursday night. And uh, Carol has um, been brought to the show for us to have a well, interesting conversation. Just a <laughs> and none other, but um, Julia, my co-host and colleague, has uh, brought us all together today. So, Julia, Carol, mm-hmm. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Carol. Welcome, Jeff. Good morning. Good, Good afternoon. morning. <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> It's a beautiful day today because we're combining people who have been born in New Zealand, who are living in Canada, and um, myself, and we're going to talk about a topic that um, is very close to most of our hearts, about ascension, about um, transcending. Carol Ann is the author of Modern Ascension, and um, Carol Ann's been working at the Ascended Masters Portal in New Zealand since 2013. And dedicated a life for that and has currently passed the seventh initiation. She's recently published a book called Modern Ascension, which is a compilation of stories about herself and 12 other initiates on this path so that others, that we can see modern, what is possible in terms of um, ascending. In the old days, people used to go off into caves or into mountains or into temples, but Carol Ann is living in Canada. And she's here on Facebook Live with us. So welcome, Carol Ann. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm nervous as heck, though. I mean, it'll be like being. It's funny. I used to be a teacher, and I could stand in front of an audience, and it was fine. But or a group of students, you know, would be over 100, and I'd, I'd be fine with it always. But then that's, you know, it was subject material that was. Um, um, it was very teachable and they needed it in order to go forward in their skill sets as nurses. So, you know, that was, it's just very different. So, yeah, this is different too. I'll just show you the picture of the cover of the book because I don't know if you've, if you've seen it and just for the audience, because it was a picture of me posted, but that's, that's it. There you are. <laughs> Modern Ascension. Yeah. It was published in Canada by Friesen Press, which, um, it's a self-publishing company. So that was really an interesting experience too. You know, it's pretty hard. There's so many people who want to publish books now. And, you know, how do you find somebody that will be able to guide you through the process? And unless you've published before, you can't get somebody to to just, you know, be your editor, publisher kind of thing. You have to go with the self-publishing. Well, it just, it, it was a much better process than I, than I expected. So... It was, it was a journey that um, I started on faith and with prompting from my higher self and everyone was in and it felt like a very good thing to do to go forward and it has been. And I have no regrets about any of that part of it. it it's just that I didn't know what was involved at all. So every step was new and new learning all the way along and then guiding this group through the whole process as well. So it was quite a journey, let me tell you. <laughs> But we're glad to have it out there, and we're very proud of it. And we just feel it's got a, it's got a very high vibe, very high frequency. I think what happened is that there, it's what's happening now, and and I'm sure you're very aware is that, and Bruno writes about it. It's that the ascended masters are here and available to help us with the process of ascension, especially today, and they. Are, uh, that's why they created the portal so that it would be it would be a way that they could bring through communication they could bring through healings for others they could br- bring through products like oils and crystals and so on but when a person is looking for uh, information about what is ascension and what is it all about there's very little out there that will provide you a really coherent path and I found some of the books on on Ascension were offering a whole smattering of ideas about what you could do in order to raise your vibration and so on. But 
I, it didn't feel like a like a system that was coordinated, coherent, integrated. And it's like when I found when I found this and could participate with the um, the offerings that were available through the um, a portal in New Zealand, I was I was I was I felt like I'd arrived at home. <laughs> it's like okay, this is it. I'd been searching for a long time and you know what that's like, you know, once we start this spiritual path where I was like going up an elevator, oh, this floor looks good. Okay, what am I gonna learn here? Okay, next, next, next. But you don't, I didn't set, have a sense of where I was at on my spiritual path. I had a sense of what I was learning and the path of the healer, but it was like, okay, so which way do I go? I became a Buddhist for a while. I, you know, I left Catholicism. I, you know, just tried to work through different beliefs. Um, and it's just, there was so much out there. There was just nothing, as I was saying before, coherent, consistent, something that, that provided a plan. And for me, I'm one who, I guess I'm pretty left brain. It's just like, I need a system. I need an umbrella that I can t hang the ideas on that are coherent, that makes sense, that I know works. And um, it's that there was nothing that brought that all together for me before. But once um, I discovered the portal, it was like, okay, I've landed. This, this I get. <laughs> it was a big connection. So, so Caroline, tell us more about the portal and okay. uh, what you understand ascended masters to be because not everyone on who is uh listening on the show will under have a clear concept of what that is yeah yeah um so an ascended master is someone who has experienced many past lives and what they've done through those past lives is really clear all of their karma and increase their vibration and increase their consciousness to the point that they didn't, they could step off the wheel of reincarnation. And when they ascended, they did not have to come back. And so they were called ascended masters. They're masters because they passed through, cleared all their karma. And so, yeah, I'm not an ascended master, but I have through passed through several levels and there is a master that resides in me. He is on his journey. What happens, I guess, is that Earth is a really good place to learn really rapidly and to um, to grow rapidly. And the masters um, that uh, are the, uh, the higher selves look for an opportunity then to re to work through and have a human experience if that's what they would like, and that helps them to move on a higher level because my higher self is on his own ascension path to his Christ self. Right? And so there's just, we don't even know what goes all beyond that. I can only tell you what my experience is. But uh, so that's what an ascended master is. Now the ascended masters that we are familiar with are um, Jesus, Mother Mary in the Western traditions. Um, we, in the Eastern traditions, and there, there are deities and goddesses, but, their Kuan Yin is known in Asia, uh, the goddess of compassion. Uh, Ganesh is a cosmic master. He's of the Indian origin and so on. So um, they, depending on where you originate, you will have familiarity if you're on a spiritual path with masters of your own sort of locale. Um, and that seems to make sense. Like for those of us who have um, uh, come from the Western and uh, religions, they uh, are often uh, masters that come in that will be like my primary was Jesus and also Mother Mary. And that that's, I don't think any accident. Uh, I went to a school in high school it was called Immaculata and, and uh, Mary, uh, I always felt very close to Mary. We, we celebrated her her feast day in December. It was, it that that to me made so much so much sense. You know, it was almost like she was present with me throughout my life. Anyway, I already knew that. So, um, but somebody who's born elsewhere in the world may find that they would connect with someone of their um, more of their origin. So, yeah. 
Does that explain that well enough for you? Or is there, is there, would you like me to expand more on that? I think that's, that's fine. And we'll okay. hear more about it, but um, well. the portal that you mentioned sort of, uh, where is the portal? How did you first find it and come across okay. it? So um, there's a, I have a group of friends in Calgary and, and uh, that we, we would get together regularly and we've often, we've taken courses together and so on. And I think it was sometime in about 2012 when one of the members said, you know what, I was Googling Ascended Masters and I wasn't getting a lot coming up that I was looking for, but there I came across this website and I started exploring it and there was a lot of information about Ascended Masters and uh, initiations and so on. And she said, have a look, like it, it looks like an interesting sort of path. And so we all we all did, and uh, some of us pursued it quite hotly because um, we were very curious about how to clear our karma and so on. So, yeah, and uh, so that's the Alpha Imaging website, and it's uh, run by Verna Marawata, and she lives in Hamilton in New Zealand. Their partner, and they have uh, been asked by a group of ascended masters and cosmic masters to uh, develop um, a portal, which is a communication or gateway that they would open so that they could come closer to the earth. And it took three years for them to establish this portal. And it's very, it's although it's a small space physically, it's a vast space energetically in the sense that there's there's many rooms and in uh, areas within it. And so it's used by uh, these vast beings as a meeting place. It's uh, used by Verna and Wairete to bring um, the images or uh, of people in for healings. It's used for the masters to create oils that we can use to help in our ascension. For instance, um, there is a violet flame oil that St. Germain has brought into being. And St. Germain is um, basically the avatar of this new age, the Aquarian age. And he has brought this in to being. We uh, is one of the most essential things that would help us speed up this process so that we could apply the oil um, gradually over time to the various chakras, various seven chakras that um, we have in our central system. And the whole idea is that it would be something that we would use in order to um, clear our karma and bring up our karma for clearing because all karma has to be paid. It's not like this is an easy journey when you start it, but that's the process of ascension, which will probably go into much more as well. But uh, yeah, and they create crystals and so on. So it's a communication and service portal. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, just that's creates, it's like a bypass from the astral plane. So there is an interference running. It's a, it, you know, it's, it's direct. And so it, it's a multi-purpose kind of, of, uh, of site. But only Verna and, and, uh, and Wairete are, uh, permitted to to use that portal so that's yeah um, so have you visited the portal itself i visited the land and uh we uh in fact sometimes uh, the people that are on this path that are in that area will have a gathering and um we'll have a group meditation and uh, we're allowed to go into the room where all of the portals are the crystal portals of all of the um, Ascended Masters and the Archangels, the LOM, they've all been created. So they have they have one of each in there. So it's like, hi, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. And uh, yeah, so I've been there. Um, again, we're not allowed to go into the portal, but there's an area outside the portal called the Ascension Temple that you're allowed to go and sit in and have an experience with the Masters if you are able to connect with them or just have an experience. And you can also do that um, in, in any, wherever you are located. So you can do it from your office and uh, connect with the portal. What Verna and uh, Wairete put on the website is, it's actually, it's a, it would be called a portal. And it looks like a quilt 
it's got a multicolored quilt and it it's a picture you've probably seen it and it goes it just sort of draws you in and it's a it's a portal that again bypasses any interference so it'll bring you right to the temple so i recommend if people are looking to connect at that level that they 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 use that on on the website uh, use that picture of the ascension temple and and go that way it's always best to use um, some kind of transport when you know to avoid interference when you're uh, working on that level <laughs> that's fascinating so you you started on this journey of um what uh, transforming your karma and ascending in in 2013 uh, yeah, I think that um, what's what um, I thought that I was on a spiritual path, and I thought that I didn't know exactly what I was doing with with it. But all the years of you know attending lectures, bringing in new information, meditating, uh, you know, having healing work, all of that. You know, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about, and I thought, okay, well, this is good. I'm, you know, I probably made some, some progress, whatever that looks like. Cause I, I didn't really know um, what that, that actually meant. It's like, well, what is enlightenment? What is awakening? What does that all mean? And, and in essence, you, you, you know, you, you've read stories about um, the people that, live in bliss and on a mountaintop and you know that is not an everyday experience the everyday experience of a person living and working is and and wanting to have um a, a spiritual ascension is you can't you can't do that you know you have responsibilities and it is something that um we need to find out you know better ways ways to do that we you know the, the path of the guru was the old way. We need to find the ways that allow us to clear our karma and get off that reincarnation wheel and go higher in our spiritual vibration and, and frequency. It's uh, so this, this, um, this path has been good. Yep. Yeah. So how do, we, how do we know whether we're clearing our karma? This is where I as a sort of <laughs> former exactly. convent oh my god there's something else that i had to do that i don't know about what, what i know I? I know so so in essence <clears throat> you know that concept that we have lived many lives like wairiti told me i at somewhere i think it's like somewhere fifteen thousand to sixteen thousand past lives and so a lot of them were you know, were as a religious person or a spiritual person or a healer or whatever and i you know i could have been a pauper or I'm a king, whatever. You've, you've had every experience if you've gone through that many lives. And um, what happens is we, we're veiled every time we come into a new body life and we don't remember what our experiences were. We don't really know who we are because we forget, because we're veiled. We forget our connection with one. And when we arrive, our karma starts uploading from about the age of two. When we leave, our karma is downloaded into our Earth star, which stays sort of dormant in the planet. When we come into a new life, that starts to get uploaded from about two till 14. And then at that point, it there's no more. It, it will, you are your character. It will manifest, your character manifests as it is but you will have had other experiences along the way to 14. It just doesn't all of a sudden wait till it fills up and then you start having experiences. You might've broken bones or had disorders or experiences. Um, but um, anyway, the thing is that, that we, and you've heard this many times, I'm sure, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And so each time we have, lessons to learn, we have karma to clear. And if we can connect with the right way to do that, then we have an opportunity then to get off the wheel. It's, it's, um, uh, it's a really challenging journey for all of us, hence we've had so many past lives. But these are the times now of ascension because we are 
we're getting energetic downloads that are increasing the light and people are opening up to it. People are, are generally uh, in so many places in the world sick of the conditions that are presenting over and over and over again, historically and currently in their political situations. And um, there's um, a great need for change, as we all know. And the need, change needs to be not just the old ways, but moving forward in um, uh, with a, a, a proper sense of what we're about. Meaning, if we understand that who we are is an aspect of God or divinity, whatever it is that the terminology that you want to use, whether it's your your Christ self or your higher self, you you need to come to terms with what with what that is, but we're an aspect of God. We're an aspect of divinity. And if that's the case, then why would we want to harm anyone else? It's like harming an aspect of yourself because that's a uni that's part of a unified whole. So that's the concept that um, if that's the concept of of um, an enlightened enlightenment. You know, it's just a recognition of it and then creating behavior around that. It's like an acknowledgement of it. And so if everyone was directed in that direction, in the sense of that that base knowledge, there would be major shifts on the planet. It's just like, well, how can I hurt you, you or me? <laughs> it's just like we're one. And it sounds, it sounds trite, but it's, it's just a basic truth. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess it's the law of doing no harm to any being in creation, but, you know, actually living that and making up for the times that you have is probably what what you're then calling as um, taking care of the karma that has been incurred. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it just, it, it, it uh, comes up, it has to be cleared. And what happens in the chakras when, uh, when you, you work on releasing the karma, it It'll come up. It'll come up for clearing, um, and uh, it it will be. It, it it might manifest in, you know, you you're, you you have an accident. Um, I I fell down the stairs early in this process. <laughs> I tripped on the top step. It was seven thirty in the morning. I was going down to do laundry. Boom, 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 and did some major damage to my back and hip. And I was alone. And Verna says that when you're on your own and you have an incident like that, it's, and she had something similar, it, it just, it's karma being released. That's what it is. So it's not always dramatic like that, but it's, um, yeah, you just have to kind of be prepared for, you know, what shows up and, you know, try to be in the sense of um, the observer so that you're uh, responding and not reacting because that's like, ew then they can just create more damage right so yeah anyway <laughs> yeah i guess the reacting not not letting your ego uh, make you the victim and um so you mentioned that um in your in your biography as the author that you started on this journey in 2013 and that you then i think left the wheel passed out of the cycle of rebirth in 2016. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was that like, or how do you know? How did, okay, so how do we know? This, this is the thing. How do you know that your karma is being cleared, right? Well, um, Verna works with Wairete, and Wairete has this uncommon ability to see. Some people see aura, auras and auric fields, and they can see the changing colors and so on. She has that ability. She can actually um, see by even looking at your photograph um, where your chakras are. How are they lined up? Are they in alignment? Are they askew? She can see the amount of density <laughs> that's in them. So <clears throat> the amount of karma that still is left within each chakra. She um, can see through dimension, through time. I mean, they're uncanny gifts. She says it's kind of like multiple screens that are on all the time you can't shut it off it's um, a very unusual gift um, and she's using it well in this lifetime so she sees and verna gets downloads through her she she had for a very long time a second crown chakra 
And so the masters use that as a portal to bypass her door and then she would receive the downloads. And so she has reams and reams of books of information that she has received from them. But um, so together they provide that service. So that is, um, Verna will receive the information that needs to be put out there. Ver and Wairete will be able to tell you where you're at in terms of your Ascension journey. And so they work with the masters to make recommendations about what you can do to help clear your karma. So, you know, for instance, particular healings or the use of the oil, uh, the um, violet flame oil and, and so on. And so they can, Wairete can read your progress. And so that's how that's how it was known. What I kind of shifts have you experienced yourself? Um, you know, I think one thing is, you know, us going somewhere and trusting someone to yeah. look at us and tell us and be the mirror in that way. But the other one, certainly for me, I'm kinesthetic. It's like the feeling. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have to any changes yourself? Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I've got I've got some some interesting yeah stories. Um, actually, when I passed the the fifth initiation, I was uh, this is going to sound odd. I was speaking with a friend just in her doorway, and the door just in her entrance way, and the doorway was just partially ajar. And a bumblebee came in, and it went around my friend, and then it came over, and it stung me in the arm. And bumblebees aren't usually they're not normally aggressive and they're don't they just kind of mind their business they're you know they, they're like these little floating things that look like they're too heavy to actually be be airborne and I was really I was really surprised and in fact it didn't sort of fall over and die or whatever but anyway I, I thought oh well that's that's kind of weird I wonder you know if there's any significance to that and uh, a couple of days later Verna uh, wrote and said, by the way, you've passed the fifth initiation. So it was it was funny because two of my friends said, oh, CA, you passed, this is an initiation. It, like that, that it came to them and Verna confirmed it a couple of days later. So that was, that was interesting. So I didn't have it in my knowing at that point that I passed, but there was something up. up. And- uh, Like a test, if you'd slapped that B, you would have failed. I don't know. <laughs> It was, it was just, I was stunned. It was just, okay, he took off <laughs> or she. <laughs> there wasn't an opportunity. Yeah. More you're addressing the hurt. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So. so I, and about the other, you, you've said there's 13 people, uh, what, including you that have, that have, that are doing these initiations and have achieved oh, that. There's actually quite a few. There's just, um, this number of people uh, put their names forward to be participants in the book and to write their stories. But there's now in at the portal, like when I first started work there, um, there were very few numbers, but now there's 50 people who have passed the seventh initiation. I'm just one of many. There's a few very early on ones and like Verna and Wairetti and, uh, there's a couple of others that have written their stories in the book and they're working at a higher level now to help bring along the bring along the younger ones um they're the ones that the, you know and to provide them with assistance and support as they're going through this growth phase um so yeah there's there's 50 there's um about 100, 148 or something like that that have uh, passed the fifth uh, initiation too so that's it's 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 that it doesn't sound like in enormous numbers, but it actually is quite a bit because that's quite significant that um, they started developing this portal, I think, like 10 years ago. And um, so when they came online, there was just, it, you know, it's sort of slow interest and, and it's just taken off. But like to a certain extent, it's not everyone's journey, obviously, but um, yeah. It, it takes a long time. Like it takes on the average probably a year between initiations. And then as you get to the higher ones, like um, between um, six and seven, it took me a little over two years. And um, yeah, so, and now it'll take probably five years or more to get to the next one. This is just, it's just a, 
a much uh, different process. So what's the next milestone? I mean, you know, sort of we, uh, I mean, as you say, we're all meditating and, mm -hmm. and trying to clear stuff. We're not following, most of us not following a um, path like yours. What, what is your next milestone? What is it that you actually have to learn or develop mm. in order to get to that next milestone? Can you share that with us? Yeah, as far as I know, I mean, Vernon and uh, Warrior are the uh, only two that have passed the eighth, but there will be others that are coming along shortly, I think, like within the next year, there'll be a few more. But the process is, is actually... Like now, I no, I no longer have the same set of chakras in my body, and if we had the eyes to see it, you could you could see that. And I have it in my knowing that there's just three dinner plate size chakras now, it's here, here, and here. And there's a process of still clearing through all the rays on all of these new chakras that has to go on and their lessons uh they're my lessons and higher self and it's just a, a process of clearing and it just takes as long as it takes so um yeah and i don't know what it means at the eighth verna and wyred you're very they're very humble people and they stay very grounded they don't they, in fact, they say, how come we're the ones that get to do this? <laughs> like, how come we got picked, you know? But uh, they, they certainly have exceptional gifts, each of them. So together, they're the right combination to, to do this. Um, but yeah, so it's, um, yeah, that's, that's the process. And then we don't know what happens after that because they have to go through the experience first. Oh, so they don't yeah you showed us that beautiful crystal and jeff here loves his crystals too so it, 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 you mentioned that the crystal that you held up earlier was related to one of the ascended masters are you do you like have a coaching system are there certain ascended masters that are you know taking a special interest in you as you pass through this journey or do they sort of change over depending on the subject like in the harry potter school how does it mm. work Oh yeah, you can ask for uh, for assistance. Uh, for instance, um, for the book, um, I I asked for um, an overlighting master, and Ganesh came, and it it um, you know he's a cosmic master, so it's like okay he in and so I would, it's not like I'm having a conversation with Ganesh. I might be speaking. <laughs> But, um, you know, I would just, uh, you know, talk to him in meditation about, you know, where we're at, you know, Loie would know, but, um, you know, for, and for assistance with going forward. So, oh yeah, here's the Ascended Master list. Yeah. I was actually quite surprised when I looked at this, how many there are and um, ones that I hadn't heard about before. Yeah, know. yeah. She has a separate list too of all of the, not just the ascended masters, it's everyone who participated in creating the portal. And there was 108. So they were, they were archangels, cosmic masters, Elohim, ascended masters, and devas. So they all work together. But yeah, it's enormous. So to answer your question about do we have other special, um, do, special connections? We have a very special connection um, with our own higher self and we get to gradually experience them because they're new learning how to be in body and we're new learning how to move our, our devotion in a sense to that, that vast being that has, is, is now in-house basically situated in our holy heart. And so what I am definitely seeing is the growth curve in terms of the level of communication that people are having with their higher selves is growing and growing and growing. And uh, so they are masters. So yeah, we do have our own special one, but they also work with other people. But you know, in terms of communication, some people have very clear communication that is um, 
uh, really, really helpful to them. Um, I'm more clairsentient, so I definitely have feeling. I, I feel, I sense that way and, and just know, I just know something, but it's not like I'm having a chatter conversation. So, and then, then Pata is the teacher for my master. So yeah, that's, that's why I have a Pata crystal now as it was, it became available. So. so tell us a bit more about Pata. I've, I've, apart from seeing the name, I actually don't know anything about him. Do you, Jeff? Mm. Pata? I've heard the name, but I haven't really gone. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know him very well. He's yeah. Egyptian. <laughs> I think I'll learn more as I go. I am really. <laughs> so I'm just getting to know his energy. So, but, uh, yeah. yeah, I guess it's, that's what it is. That's you what it is. Mm -hmm. And there's that frequency of vibration coming in. I yeah. mean, listening to you, it's, um, it reminds me of that, um, you know, the body is a sacred temple. And mm -hmm. I guess, but we don't devote much of it to, um, to um, embodying the sacredness that actually flows through us in Qigong, we talk about the humans being a bridge between the celestial and the earthly, mm -hmm. but generally mm -hmm. we just have to try and deal with what the outside world is throwing at us, especially in, in COVID times, but we're just reacting rather than realizing that we can um, channel and yeah, when you were talking about the higher self, you know, it sounded more like a tango. It's <laughs> sort of like you were connecting and trying to bring two of you into this body <laughs> because yeah. The yes, higher one's got the um, perspective, and we're the one on the ground. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know why they'd want to come here. <laughs> so, <laughs> leave that safe zone. But uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I there's a lot. Why? Why don't they? Why don't they just? You know. You, I mean, look at that long list. If there's like so many of them, mm. or would you say they're here and we just don't? We just keep on walking through them. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep using the gym. I want to say something. <laughs> well, you know, as with it, they, they honor they honor our path. So if we invite them in, they'll come close. And if we're determined to get to know them, then they'll find ways to show us. So in, in, we understand that clearly from the angelics. They they have to be asked. They don't have free will. So and they're it's almost like pick me pick me you know if you were to look up and actually see them and we have no idea even how many of them there are but they are they're there they're available for help and they will you know the old uh, i need a parking stall kind of thing is you know it's trite but it, it's uh, it, just a very small example of of how we can call that in to make our life a little easier, you know, <laughs> so, so everybody round, 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 parking lot, right? So that kind of thing. Jeff's got a lot of experience, and he's graduated from Parking Angels, so perhaps you'd like to share? Yeah, yeah please. <laughs> oh, oh, you're on the spot now. You've got your <laughs> your angel friends for help. What kind of situation do you get them uh, to? That's you a free phone call, isn't it? You just ask. Yeah, but apart from parking, what else can you get the angels mm -hmm. to help you with? Um... Business wise, it's pretty good. I mean, I recall years ago, and I'm really talking years ago, um, that I wanted a cash flow business. Mm -hmm. um, and what happened was this guy drove down from Gladstone to ship his car to New Zealand. And on the Friday, he ran me up to say he was um, at this motorcycle shop to sell the, his bike to a motorcycle shop. And they were going to pay me. And I said, well, hang on a sec. They don't owe me the debt. You owe me the debt. So, hang on a sec. We wrote this little deed out to say they honour this payment. You know? mm -hmm. And in the meantime, while I'm preparing this, his father rings me up and says, well, I'm here. I've just arrived in Brisbane. Do you, do you know where my son is? I said, oh, he's down at Breakfast Creek at this motorcycle shop. I said, oh, thanks, mate. I said, you got the number? Yeah, you gave him the number. So on Sunday, I had to turn up to a, a suburb called Maruka here at Brisbane and to meet this guy. And he said, I'm really pleased you got spoken with that. I said, why is that? He said, oh, he was able to sell the bike for cash. <laughs> there you but, go. <laughs> but Here's the cash. So, oh, that's for a cash flow business. So anyway, the next one was um, I only asked for those people who are going to work with me. Yeah. Oh, the phones went dead, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Man, three, four days, five days. I mean, and tell us just says there's something wrong with my phone lines, you know. And um, I started the phone, so I put my prices up. 
you know, and then I got one phone call. Basically, yeah, I put my phone up, and then I got this phone call, and then I gave them the price line stuff at the new high price. And um, I can get the business. And then I got, well, if you kept the price as it was, you would have got that business. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> okay, there you go. I received, you know. But i tell you what, I don't know how many places I've gone to, female places I've gone to, and their whole bedroom wall or their whole kitchen wall is just chock a block full of all these pictures of blokes, aspects of males, you know. And it's their vision board. And that's what they want in their mail. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so they've got, you know, they've got the legs of Buddy Patrick Swayze in the dance moves, you know, and then they've got the eyes of Buddy you know, Tom Cruise, you know. I mean, they've got, mate, I'll tell you, I've never, 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 had, never had so much fun. <laughs> How do you put DNAs together, in it? <laughs> you get the one that you want. Anyway. I think that's some of their, their, their early play, play too, right? Like when you first realize, oh, you know, uh, there, I've got some other aspects here that I can work with. And so, you know, vision boards can be really helpful. But sometimes it's like, you know, it's like why the secret sort of, whoosh, you know, went that trajectory, trajectory because it is – if you're creating from your egoic self and I want this, I want those legs and I want this torso and I want, you know, I mean, it's not going to happen, but you know, you, you just that, um, that sense that I, I want this and I want that and so on. Like, it's not like we shouldn't be asking for uh, living in abundance. There's nothing wrong with that. It's all available to us. And do you know that that's, there's, that's all good. Um, but um you know, as you progress on your path, you realize, hey, I better be coming from an integrated self. I better be coming from a higher vision. Like, what's in the highest good of me and everyone else? And and then you, your vision board starts to shift, right? So it's no longer the yacht and the, <laughs> what's wrong with the yacht? Nothing, but, you know, it's just the focus on, the shift is from the 3D view of materiality to a more, well, they're calling it a five-dimensional view of the, the whole picture. Yeah, of what we're involved in. So, yeah, that's anyway. But an, well, regardless, angels are brilliant. Right. Yes, and she came to the conclusion: best possible outcome for everybody. Best possible outcome. Exactly. Same thing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 So, the case of uh, it doesn't have to be about me. It's about all us collectively coming together. That yeah. Comes to the best possible yeah. Outcome. Yeah. yeah, when I did the DNA cell healing, the phrase is uh, rescue and harmonious development for the world and all beings. So it kind of is. That's similar. lovely. That's lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, and it's so important. I mean, you know, today I was driving to on the, on the motorway and this woman just cut across. She was a cyclist. She saw me coming. She just dashed across. And my first thought was she's going to get herself killed. And I just went, oh. I've actually got to pull that one back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going to live a long life. She's going to be happy. But that yeah. was the reaction. Yeah. But you know, I've obviously learned yeah. from my parents and stuff like that. But you do have to be aware and monitor of what you put out and um, become responsible for that or, as you say, have that 5D vision. Well, well you, like, you're creating more karma, right? If, if, um, if you're unconscious, you're, you're constantly creating karma. And then you just don't want to do that. And we can, I, I probably create karma every day. So I got to really watch myself. I mean, I have to try to focus on, like Verna says, okay, one way to do that is to, you know, come from your heart. Let your thoughts come from your heart. Let your words come from your heart. Let your feelings, you know, put, should be a basis of that, be heart-based. So that you have come from a place of compassion and non-judgment and, and, and a step-back observer because, Otherwise, it's um, yeah. As we create karma, where there's there's always consequences. You're just gonna it's a whoosh back, <laughs> right back at you. Somehow you're gonna have that experience. So you're very conscious, Julia, and you just you recognized it right away. You pulled it in. Oop, nope, no karma. There you go. You don't want to create anything for anybody else through any negative wishes either. Clearly, but it's 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 raising your consciousness, and that that's a. a that's a, a wonderful benefit of all of this work as well. So that's brilliant. Yeah. I think mothers create karma. <laughs> Elaborate, please. No, fathers do. Right. Yeah, what do no, fathers do? Well, 
<laughs> the current lockdown, okay, mothers are there with the children, right? And the kids are making noise and all that stuff. And so all of a sudden, mum's flipped out and goes off and uses some really blue language and then says, don't slam the door. <laughs> You've just gone and set the picture of slamming the door. And so verbalization is one level of communication, but the picture, the thought goes with, it's like a carrier wave, you know, there's a picture along with the words and the, sure. and the picture gets there before the words and the picture gets to the child and says, slam the door, oh, slam the door. <laughs> yeah, that's right. door. Oh, man. All she has to do is say, darling, love of my life. Uh, yeah. The door, please. Yes, right. Yeah, if we were all that conscious, eh? <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess that's it. Kids get to mirror us and show us where our faults are. Um, so, tell oh. us about the other twelve people that um, you cover in your book and what their paths were like in as much if they were different from yours. Mm, yeah, it's quite interesting. Is uh, depending on the age group. Religion can be a primary influence. So, like you, Julie, convent girl, I <laughs> went to convent school, and uh, and there's there's a, a few of us like that. There's <laughs> recovering. Cat. Oh, okay. I don't know the whole story, but anyway, that's okay. Um, so I I think about well, first of all, I'll, I'll start with a very impactful story. Um, there's a, a, a Dr. Simi. Uh, Ahuja, and, and uh, she's kind of in the in the middle of the book. And and Simi is uh, born in India, and when she was twelve, their family emigrated to the U.S. She experienced major trauma from about age six to twelve. Like till, and the only reason it stopped is because they moved. And of course, you know, kids don't tell their parents that they're being abused by, you know, their cousins. And so she talks in her book about the brain damage that she experienced, about the self-esteem issues, um, about the cultural change once she had moved to the US and all of those things that had led to her having no sense of, and being angry and no sense of, of self or her abilities. And so, she got married quite young and had a child and she actually realized at some point in conversation with a friend that she had in school who'd become a doctor or had actually been admitted to a medical school uh, a prestigious medical school and she thought why would she have hung around with me i'm just duh and then she realized well that's not that's maybe not so true and she started that's what caused her to uh, you know to shift gears and start to think of, of things a little bit differently. Anyway, she went on a path of healing. She healed her brain from the trauma that had, you know, interrupted in her learning. She she went back to school and uh, got a basic degree and with, you know, top marks and got into med school. And she is a doctor today. So that's an amazing recovery. And she has had a journey of, um, she did the whole course in miracles. I don't know exactly the time that she discovered the the um, uh, portal and the the healings there, but uh, I I luckily got to meet her actually when uh, she was traveling and she was doing healing work for her own self. And uh, she does a lot of inner child work and she works with with uh, patients on that. She works within the traditional model, but she also works. She has um, is an extraordinary understanding of what the causation of the illness is. And so when the person is ready to hear it, she can tell them. She had a really great example of somebody who um, had this terrible wound that was, you know, had been excised over and over again, was not healing. And Simi intuited that it was a relationship issue with his wife that was longstanding. And she said, if you were to heal that, your wound would heal. He took it to heart. He went home, sat down with his wife. They healed their relationship, and his wound healed. And and it just it just went really quickly. And Simi said he was on a, a, a just another long road of not healing had that work not been done. So that's an example of the kind of work that she's able to do now. So yeah, she's a seventh initiate, 
But what a difficult story, but what a profound recovery and experience. And she's still recovering and working through that, but it's, um, that's amazing. I, I just, I just hold her in my heart. Um, and then, uh, uh uh, Tammy, I really like her story too. She, I mean, I love all the stories, but um, Tammy grew up in a Catholic and was very devout and loved religion, loved going to church. She considered being a nun and for a period of time, but um, you know, when she was young, she had a lot of unexplained um, memories showing up and no one could help her with that. And it created a lot of challenge for her as a teenager, but she couldn't work it out. She's just not, yeah. And religion wasn't helping her particularly, but when she uh, she went to school, did business degree, got she got married. And um, when her son was quite young, he began being really afraid going up the stairs uh, to his bedroom and he didn't want to do that at night. And so trying to deal with the fear, she did the traditional medical model. So she, you know, he saw a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist tried to work with them and they got home and she said, you know what, there's something else going on here. Please talk to me. And he said, well, mom, there's these spirits and ghosts and they're coming through my room. And then there's guides that are talking to me. He came, he came really early into his gifts and knowing this. And, and so because she, was she she said it absolutely turned her world upside down because what she thought she knew was like okay who are these people who is anubis like you know she said okay that's egypt i like egypt you know so she started having remembrances of past lives and started um gaining understanding of why she was afraid to have her back to the door because of a past life experience where someone had come through and taken her out. So all of these things started, you know, coming up into her own awareness, because she opened up to uh, her son and didn't shut him down. And so she now is an astrologer and does soul readings and, and other things. She's um, quite amazing. So she left the Catholic Church because it, it didn't equate. If it would, if it fully equated, then she would be able to have to have stayed there. But she's just gone on a different path. So that's an I find that quite an extraordinary story. It's really well written, actually. Um, and then you know everybody's just so different. There's Luz, Luz Victoria Winter, and and she actually and we'd had a discussion before this book ever came into being, and she said, you know, someday somebody should write about what our our path is like this modern ascension. She called it, and I thought something kind of twigged in me, and I thought because mm. I've been. I apparently have had many lives as a scribe and I, that's, it was just like, no, no, not me, not, no, no, <laughs> but I knew it. And, and uh, it wasn't until probably a year later and it was at, just after I passed the seventh and I was shown this image by my higher self in meditation of me sitting at a table with blank paper and a pen. And I thought, oh, what does that mean? And, and then later it was the idea of the book and the stories and to write stories. So that would be the way that we would tell people about we're ordinary, but we did this. We're off the karmic wheel and that's what your journey is. That's the purpose of your humanity here. That's the purpose of your existence. It's not that your outward job is and what you do is not important because it is, because that's all at a level at which we participate in our whole sphere of duality. But the focus on the inner journey is what it's all about. Anyway, so go back to Luz. So Luz spent uh, years in India with a guru, a very famous guru, actually. And um, she went through several initiations, but it was a very long process. And when she came back, she, she, um, a, she, I guess she found the, I'm not quite sure the whole sequence of it, but she did work with the um, ascended masters through the portal and it just really accelerated her journey. So she's got her whole family on the plan and just really is, you know, thinks it's it's most amazing. And she's just back living in ordinary life. She's a, a master teacher. She's actually a supervisor of special needs kids in, in her particular area in the school system there. And uh, yeah, so pretty neat individual list, yeah. 
but what a journey she had, you know, to India and back. Uh, and then to bring it back into an ordinary life again, you know? So, um, yeah. And then I'll just tell you one more. There's, um, there's two uh, men in the book as well. They're probably, I'm trying to guess, I didn't ask them, but you know, they're late thirties. Oh, are we? What? <laughs> yeah, to Missy, there you go. <laughs> and uh, one, one of them, um, he's a first rate. So that's why I'm bringing that up. And he, uh, Oh, I guess he's had a very rapid path. He had um, his his master's, first string master, I guess, speaking sort of to him this, you know, it's all about alignment with divine will when you're on a first ray. And he was getting prodded and poked, which, what are you going to do? Is it going to be your way? Is it a strong personality? Are you going to go the path that you're destined to do? And that he just kept being asked and prodded. And he finally went, okay. <laughs> and then everything unfolded for him. It just flooded in. And uh, now he is doing incredible work. He, he works with, it's like he's an alchemist. He works with a substance called organite, which is very protective when you have exposure to EMF and uh, interfering, interfering energies. And uh, he makes these beautiful pieces that are, um, you can put them on a mantle and he incorporates sacred geometry in them. And each piece is unique and they're, they're beautiful and they're beneficial. And now he's started offering um, these unique healings. So yeah, it's just, it's amazing what evolves when you're, you know, and, and every, everybody's path is, is just very unique. And I'm, I think, I'm, um, thanks for sharing that because I mean I think that's one of my motivators is um, just instinctively knowing that there is there's so many far more far more capabilities to us as humans than mm -hmm. we shown in society or we get taught that we can use and it's really about being able to shift the paradigms and unlock them. Yes, but I understand you yourself you work with energy and dowsing as well. Can you tell us a little about that? Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah um, we, I work with a, a partner who's also on this this path. Uh, it just uh, we're real soul sisters. We've been known each other for many many years. Uh, we called it ascension dowsing, and we learned the dowsing. We went through all the courses um, years ago, like about ten years ago. Didn't do a lot with it. I I, I learned the process enough by doing enough homes. Um, and what it does is it it clears various energies that might be interfering with your home that can bring the overall energy down and can actually interfere with you if you've got lines coming through your bedroom or areas that you sit in. There can be negative vortexes and so on that really drain your energy. In fact, today, Jan and I went back uh, to revisit a house that we'd done three years ago. And we both intuited that before we went that there was a problem with the toilet and because energetically fields can change geophysical events can alter the etheric lines around and the grids around the the earth so so we went back and sure enough there's a deep negative vortex but it was a condo so the room below is their apartment that they also owned and then there was an apartment below that so fortunately it wasn't too many layers well the woman on the bottom layer um, allowed us to come in and so we were able to place crystals around the toilet and and use our intention to create correction of the um the lines and it turned into a positive vortex and there were four of us there three of us felt this energetic shift come up through us i had goosebumps the uh, the woman who brought us down there had uh she said she just felt this wave of warm bubbling energy coming up and it just changed the energy in that condo dramatically and it's a good thing because the person who lives there has cancer. So it could potentially change her path. We don't know. But anyway, that's, and then, and then when we went back up to the condo that we'd been called into Dallas, it was totally shifted because the toilet had created a portal, a very negative vortex portal. So the, the these are things that, that you can, that you can fix. There's the, oh, and importantly, uh, in those three condos on that that were stacked, another woman had breast cancer. So these things can create interfering energies, and um, you're when you're in that all the time, it you know you can 
to be disruptive enough to create the onset of disease. So anyway, we correct all of that. We also use sacred geometry and hold that in place to create uh, increased frequency and vibration within the home and work with the client. And yeah, we yeah clear entities, do all kinds of things. And anyways, each home is unique and it's really phenomenal. So you should have Jan and I back. We'll give you lots of stories. <laughs> Yeah, what what the scariest entities you've been up against? Oh well, you know, usually there there's some positive ones. They might be guardians in the land, so we always check that too. You know, because they don't necessarily want to go, and in fact, they sometimes want to uh, be involved more. Um, and um, entities can be just people that are hangers on that have come in with somebody into your house. And they just decide, oh, this is nice. I'll stay here for a while instead. And can tell I can get another carrier. And uh, so nothing, we haven't come across anything really wicked. So that's that's good. <laughs> you know, it hasn't been a deep force to be reckoned with, let's say. They've just been out there. Not necessarily really damaging ones. I think that they're, yeah. But there's a lot of them out there. They they look for us to hang on to and you know they're not welcome <laughs> so yeah. shoot up to jeff jeff what's the worst entity you've had to deal with so far the worst yeah like the scariest the most draining one draining um, that's probably that bloody snake isn't it <laughs> i thought it was a healing snake <laughs> You turned it into it. Anyway, you better explain Ooh. it to the audience. <laughs> um, and I live in Australia with snakes, but snakes don't seem to come around here except for one little green snake, tree snake. Mm -hmm. but, um, I remember being in the UK mm -hmm. and the lady said her um, corn snake had some major oh. health got a naturopath to come in to bring these essential oils to, um, but first of all they brought another lady who did um, kinesiology so we got the owner of the snake to just tune in on it and in the meantime they gave me the snake to hold you see so anyway the snake came up and it starts to come up my arm you know? and next second this blue electric discharge like electricity came off my whole body and hit the snake and the snake off it went Whoa! <laughs> so, oh my god! <laughs> anyway, so snakes and I haven't really sort of gone all that well, you know. So anyway, there's a guy who's watching the show. He's Austrian called Thomas, and he's invented the acoustic sound water Something, bed. Yeah. yeah, and he he put me on this sound waves. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant, Carol! I'm going to tell you, he's going to come on the third of September. Oh, okay. Cool. He said, I'm going, to, I'm going to ground you like your radio station. You need to be earthed. I said, you're okay, good play. <laughs> afterwards, I, was shot. I said, oh, mate, I thought you said you're going to ground me. I said, bloody hell. It was like Jeff Shaw's TV channel just opened up. <laughs> anyway, um, next morning, <laughs> next morning, hey, there's a big bloody snake in it. It's a huge snake's coming in my dream. Massive. Anyway, um, and I manifest this pool pole. On my swing pool and put a brush on it and i was really pushing the snake away in my, in my, and the fear that was coming up in my body was amazing. Awesome. It's amazing i was a big snake it was like an anaconda you know anyway um <laughs> and then, this, this girl came there a lady came down and sat next to me and i thought oh a bit of man up now you know got that male thing about the woman protect the woman you know and put the show got some stuff anyway next second the snake comes right up and, is, and it rears up like it's coppers, but it's not the copper ring. And it starts talking to me. And it says, oh, hi, my name's Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> and next thing I'm going to put this head in my hands. And I'm, I've got this head <laughs> in my hands. And I'll tell you. And I said, oh, it's got a corner on it. It says your name's Daddy. Jeez. He said, ah, that's what they call me. No, my real name's Eddie. And next second I'm looking at the snake in the eyes. Said, oh, I'm the healer. <laughs> so I'm... I jump up and I turn around to go to Blake Cameron and look, those two, those characters. I said, oh, hey, I can speak snake. <laughs> I can speak snake. <laughs> I can speak snake. That's unbelievable. 
It's <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter, isn't it? Uh, anyway, so um, you talk about that would be the biggest fear. That was the biggest fear you had, and the snake showed you that you had it, and she released it for you. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it wasn't in the, I mean, the, we're talking about this world, and we're talking in the Some other world, it was the yes. other world that really revealed um, how much uh, fear was actually still in my um, body. You know? Even though my physical body, I could still feel my physical body, but that's another experience that I was having, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of that going on at the moment, like the dreams I'm having, you know, people getting stabbed, people, you know, no. doing all these things that they shouldn't be doing and I'm freaking out. So there's a lot of sort of um, dream time clearing that's happening at the moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm like that, Carol, what? Sorry, what? Do you get, you know, aspects of that? Uh, I was just thinking about the fact that one of the things that um, we, uh, I did first of all when I contacted the um, Verna, at the portal was to get a protection grid. And the protection grid is something that um, they asked the ascended masters. So how do you protect people from invasive entities? The ones that come in and they're, they're not nice, they're not helpful, they're, they can be destructive, they can burrow and they can create disease, um, mental, physical, whatever. And they're, un, they're unwelcome, they're uninvited. Um, you know, how do you, how do you protect yourself from from that if you're not a big seer in particular as well so they gave them something called a protection grid now the protection grid is for life and so they bring you into the portal somehow like it and um your unique protection grid is visualized uh, by uh, a wireti and then she sends you a note about it and she says it's in place it's in place for good you will not they may come close but they can't get in the only problem is potentially if you are not uh, very evolved and you don't have well wishes for others there it's going to come right back at you so that's also inside the grid so you have to keep that in mind so that's that's pretty brilliant, I think. Um, yeah, to having that, especially if um, you are a person who's expanding in the light, you're very attractive because they they are energy suckers, right? So you've got to you want to be constantly clearing. You want to be able to just proceed. So anyway, I'd recommend it <laughs> if you're having any issues and if you think that there might be some causation there, because I find too that if people bring them in the house, for instance, like can have a sense of it like the other day I was sensing I was getting a little ee -ee and irritable and um, I thought okay this doesn't feel good so I I just I I have a big copper ring and I doused and there were some entities in us so I set it down and I invite ascended masters in and it goes very quickly because they're like oh good because usually they're they're like just they can be lost they you know anyway they go through close the portal and it's done and energetically immediately I feel whew, so much better. So yeah, it's nice to be able to know how to do that. Some people are able to just do it etherically or through their mind. I'm not, I can't. So <laughs> I find dowsing really helpful in that regard, mm. but it's more, it can be a repeat process because every time someone comes into your house, you, you know, there's the potential for that to happen. So. Yeah. And as you say, there are a lot of um, lost souls that haven't crossed, mm -hmm. crossed through and if you are able to help them number one they're trying to actually get your attention yeah. else it's can see them or feel them number two yes with your support team with the archangels ascended masters they can actually do the work you just have to kind of be the witness and experience it so that yeah. it can happen on the human realm and then they can move on and um yeah ascend from their stuck existence or their it's oh, it's, a, it's a it's a benevolent Sorry. act yeah go and start reading madame Mablesky's books uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> I've read a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. Um, Theosophists, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I read a bit of that, but that's actually how I found about the Alpha Imaging, the Verna Morato, because it's far more up-to-date and uh, culturally wider. Um, there, you know, the, there's a much wider range of the Ascended Masters that are, and it, the information seems to be more current, but it is. Mm -hmm. She was actually the one that really brought it out to the Western Yeah, world, she did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, drama is a lot of that. Mm. And if Carol, and last mm -hmm. question, you could speak to the young ones yeah. under 20 
today on behalf of the Ascended Masters that you're working with? What would you say to them? So, you know, I'm on the, the fifth ray now with my mask knife, um, higher self. And it's the ray of truth, knowledge, and healing. And for me, this is, I think I, I always thought that I, when I heard that I was on, or I knew, when I knew that I was on the fifth ray, I thought, I've always been on the fifth ray. I've always been searching, but not exactly the case. But it's important for anyone. There's a lot of information out there, and a lot of it, it can be conflicting, and you may not know where to go. It's important to develop a, and cultivate a relationship with your own inner self, whatever you would call that, and listen to the still small voice within, because that will be your best guide. And stay, you know, it's, they talk about the straight and narrow path, but it's kind of hard when there's so much out there and we get easily distracted. So go within and discover what your personal truth is and, and then find your path. There's many, many, for instance, on the Ascension Path, there's many, many ways to accomplish this. What we wrote about in the book was the way that we did it. And, uh, but, you know, I still talk about in there the importance of finding your way to do it. So anyway, that's my advice. Go within and be kind to everybody <laughs> on, on your way, that keeping your personality um, in check, uh, keeping your ego in check is, is an important aspect of this too. You know, you can be on an ascension journey and be a dick. I like, know you don't want to do that. <laughs> that's not, that, that's not a very fair statement, but in essence, we do have to work at it. We have to work at not creating more karma. We have to work at being the best we can be at clearing behavioral patterns that might create issues for other people or, or ourselves. Just become really aware, very cognizant, very clear, and just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wonderful, Caroline. Thanks for <laughs> sharing us, sharing that information with us. If people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Um, they can send a message to me by going to that website. Yeah, they can contact me through there. Yeah, on my Gmail account. So that's probably the easiest right now. Yeah, sure, I'd be glad to chat with people. That'd be fine. Connect with them. Yeah, they can also find out more information about just by going directly to the Alpha Imaging website too. There's so much information on there. But yeah, I hope this is I hope this is demystified it a little bit. Um, you know, yeah, somewhat. Certainly. Just you make it very approachable rather than something <laughs> unobtainable. So thank you very oh, much. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> we did it. <laughs> we did it. Yeah, there's hope. Uh, so. Jeff, any okay. parting words? No. All right. Well, thank yeah. you. Bless much. you both. Oh. Love, lovely to meet you. <laughs> and to our listeners out there, thank you very much for joining us on this topic. And um, we hope you have a great weekend and uh, that um, if you have any stories you want to share that are just as inspiring as Carol Ann's, you know, it's important that we connect and communicate and uh, we give each other hope and we we share our, we, and celebrate our wins as well that, you know, that we can dream a better future and we can live a better future and we can become a better future in that way. Mm -hmm. All right. So from all of us at Dreaming the New Dream, thank you very much. Thank you all. <laughs> Hi. Hi. It's like got all the banners, and everything. Like it's just like click of a butt. Oh wow! And we've even got credits now. Fantastic. Oh, sorry. <laughs>